Oh my gosh, look at this greens. Oh my gosh. Oh. I feel like you're gonna lose your phone if you keep it back there. Um, That's not the best idea. World Towning, farm to table. So today, Laura and I are going on a deep sea dive over in Bonaire, and it is going to be very fun. Really cool thing about where we are right now is I am going to go snorkeling. I'm gonna wear my life jacket. I'm gonna fight through that fear that you saw in a previous vlog, but I'm super excited to go, so. Change is one of those things that can either light a fire to get things done or cause you to close your eyes, click your heels together three times and shout, there's no place like home. Hope you get the reference. How are we doing with round two of cleaning? Not good. <laughs> it's that bad, huh? Uh, Bathroom's looking good, guys. Looking really good. It looks exactly the same. Our time in Bonaire has been quite slow. Okay. Is this just in case we drop in the ocean? Is that why I'm recording this? Exactly. <laughs> It's summer and we've been doing all the things that one would expect while mooring paradise. We've been playing in the water, enjoying ice cream, and just living our life. This, this is oh. a rock that I'm gonna end up tossing into the ocean because it's covered in paint and then retrieving as practice for free diving. Now that our time in Bonaire is drawing to a close, it's time to get to those things that we really wanted to do and some of those things that we not exactly want to do, but know that we have to do. How do you feel? Um, it, uh, Join us as we spend the last few days in Bonaire and quite frankly, the last days with Avalon on board Friendship before she heads off for university. Thank you so much to our patrons whose support make these episodes possible. Do you think I need shoes? You might. Well, I didn't bring them. Boat life, shoeless. Living on anchor is one of the best feelings you can have. You gently get rocked to sleep as a cool breeze passes through open hatches. Waterfront dining is a ritual that never, ever gets old. And in this case, the trip to the veggie market is a short dinghy ride away. So we're trying something new, I feel like every day here in Bonaire, part of the cruising life. Even though we've been on the boat two years, I don't really feel like we've got to immerse in the different aspects of the culture until the last couple months. And here they have I guess it's called like a fruit or veggie basket. Kind of like what you have when you have a stationary life where a local farm will drop a box of fresh fruits and veggies off at your doorstep once a week for a fee. We actually have to go to the dock and pick it up and it's 12 US dollars for a basket from a local farm. And we're, I'm super excited about this. We just ordered one this week, but I think if we really like it, we'll order two or three next week. I'm always opting to buy from a local farmer as opposed to the big box stores. This is the most traffic I've seen in this mooring area ever. Everyone's like, I gotta get my veggies. We pre-ordered the veggies, so we do have a guaranteed box. It's really cute, kind of meeting up with everyone. It's, you know, I mean, we're world towning for a reason. Like we like these little mini hometowns, even though we love the freedom the boat offers us, we still love to connect with people and kind of feel like part of a community and that we're contributing. I feel like I'm, I'm a boat person now, Will. I feel like doing. you're gonna lose your phone if you keep it back there. Um, That's not the best idea. It's probably not the best idea. You know how I like to learn things the hard way. And now the veggie truck has arrived. Let's see what we get to get. Which boat are you from? Um, Friendship, yes. Friendship, okay. Thank yeah, you so much. I think I came in at the last oh, minute. Oh, that's good. Like you, met, you met the mark. <laughs> So that's Jessica. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet yeah. you too. Nice Thank you. Thank you guys yeah. like it? Okay, that's okay. Hey, and then the Angelo. Okay. <laughs> Oh, do you have change? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, there's vodka in here. Oh, Did you bring vodka in your bag? Sweet. Oh my gosh, look at this greens. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm so excited. Okay. Spinach maybe? Big spinach? I'm not sure. Um, this is um, basil. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. I don't know, some other green. Oh, whoa, it looks like some hot peppers. Oh, oh this is gonna be exciting for you. Look at this. That's so awesome. Hi, Ooh, they smell hot. Hopefully they last longer too. And, oh my gosh, look at the cucumbers. There's a mango and cucumbers. These look delicious. And uh, that's it. Oh my gosh, this makes me so happy. All this for 12 US dollars. I think we're gonna have some caprese salad tonight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some groceries, get some tomatoes, but Oh my gosh, it smells so awesome. I don't know what that is. I don't know, but right Sprouts? over there, you've got 
all the people doing noodle aerobics. I do aspire to do that one week. I get aspire them. to not have to do that because we're eating fresh greens. <laughs> you just want to eat the fresh greens and not exercise? Yes. I must admit, we are not always gourmet chefs on board. It's not that it's hard to be, but when you're in the throes of life, the last thing you're thinking about is how creative you can get in the kitchen. In the Caribbean, the ingredients you are normally accustomed to having are not always around. So when we came across these goodies, it was time to celebrate with some homemade goodness. World Towning Farm to Table, guys. I have actually never made pesto before, but since we've got some amazing basil and some spinach, I'm doing a combo of the two and I'm gonna make pesto for lunch. So, World Towning Farm to Table. So I'm following this recipe from Simply Recipes and they have it in three stages. So you do the pesto spinach and the pine nuts first, then you put in the cheese and the olive oil, and then you put the garlic and the salt and pepper in last. So to be honest guys, whoa, look at that. To be honest, our lunches are normally not this fancy, but since we had it, I kind of got overly excited. Now, I ran out of olive oil. This is the first time I think I've ever run out of anything. You guys know how I love to provision, uh, but I did. So I'm gonna do like olive oil and coconut oil. I hope that does the job. It might be a coconut tasting um, pesto. I'm just gonna, you know what? I'm just gonna freestyle. I'm just gonna throw it all in there right now. It looks a little watery. Oh. It looks, that looks good. No? It smells like coconut. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be good. Just add, I had, more, add more garlic to I, it. You taste it. Will you taste it? Listen, we've, we've learned in this family that if you add garlic to anything, it tastes good. We, we have to improvise. I mean, that's what it's... Look at this, you guys. These cucumbers I talked about that we got in the, in the basket this morning they're are so delicious. fabulous. They're super little. They're not seedy at all. They're like the cucumbers I grew up with in Maine. I love them. Mm. All right, well. Oh, boy. I don't know about that. Okay. You ready? Okay. It's good. Does it taste like coconut? It's a little. It's oh. like tropical. <laughs> that's, I like it. That's you being really nice. No, it's quite good. All right, let me try it. Let me try it. It's tropical. <laughs> mm. It's not, not bad. bad. No. So it's farm to ta farm to world tanning table, pesto coconut. Coconut pesto. Now, if we can have pina coladas with that, mm, that is really good. Really good. Now, if there's one thing that is a must-do in Bonaire, it's going diving. Bonaire is the premier location in the Caribbean to go diving. And today, we're going to dive adventure to a location only a 10-minute boat ride from the mooring field. We have not had dive lessons since Portugal, where the conditions were, well, let's just say not as great as here. So, we were really looking forward to further exploring the deep here in Bonaire. So today, Laura and I are going on a deep-sea dive over in Bonaire, and it is going to be... Very fun. Very fun. What makes Bonaire such an incredible place to go diving is that with just steps from the shore, there are dozens of different coral and hundreds of species of fish. All along the coast, there are identified dive spots with a dedicated mooring buoy. If there's a big yellow thing bobbing in the water, that's a dive spot. How deep is it here? Uh, here it's just 20. 20 feet? The dive is over there. The dive's back there. Okay. This is the mooring, yeah. I could feel it in my bones. There was something going on. I checked out, hanging around. Got old. Cause darling, there was nothing right. All you seem to do is lie. Days are gone. I'm walking tall while you're alone. When I think about the way we used to be, when I think about the things you took from me, I know that I am so much better. I'm better off. When I look at what I've done, now that we're apart, when I look at what
So far, we've spent our entire time in Bonaire visiting and diving around the main island. But Bonaire has a baby brother, Klein Bonaire, which was sitting right behind our mooring spot. And for our final adventure in this country, we set off for another snorkel and to address a long-standing issue on board. Welcome to Klein Bonaire. What is Klein Bonaire? There's Bonaire and there's Klein Bonaire. So basically, to keep it real simple, Bonaire is Big Bonaire, and Klein means small, so small Bonaire. So it's just a little island right beside Big Bonaire. And we are here today for, I don't know, five minutes, maybe 45 minutes. I would like to be here longer, and I had dreams of being here um, you know, every other day snorkeling, but sometimes this travel life doesn't work out as you planned. We got to do some really fun things here. We got to go scuba diving, snorkeling. Uh, we went to pick our veggies up at the local delivery service. We hung out with other boats, uh, but we didn't get to hang out with other boats as, oh, we went to a potluck too. We didn't get to hang out with other boats as much as we wanted to because we had a lot of things going on. Anniversary, birthday, Avalon's graduation, school finishing, one of our buddy friend boats got COVID. And it makes me sad. This is sometimes what happens in this lifestyle that you can't do it all. But the great thing about the sailing lifestyle, opposed to the land traveling lifestyle, is that we're kind of all heading in the same direction. So the other boats are going to Aruba, Colombia, San Blas, and hopefully we'll all be able to meet up again and kind of rekindle what we didn't get enough of at this point. Now, the really cool thing about where we are right now is I am going to go snorkeling. I'm gonna wear my life jacket. I'm gonna fight through that fear that you saw in our previous vlog, but I'm super excited to go. So let's go. Anything down there? Just do it, Alex. Just do it. You can do this one. <laughs> this is what I've waited two years for, Will. What? Time alone? <laughs> Funny, it's July 30th. We are now officially on our, almost our two-year mark of being on the boat. And we've had to wait this long to get something this magical. Good uh, things are worth waiting for, right? Yeah, but Avalon's gone in like a week. She'll be back. I guess. It's not the same. This is a scary part of change where you know that you have to make adjustments to keep yourself safe. And in my case, I know I need to get over my fear of swimming. So I took this time to get out and explore the water with some adult supervision. But if you want some good advice, I can offer this small wink. You'll find that a little goes a long way. A little goes a long way. Um, it, uh, it, to be on, it was beautiful, but to be honest, I thought it would be a little bit easier since I have a life jacket on. A couple of boobs not hanging out here. <laughs> um, I was actually, I got tired, I think, because I wasn't relaxing into the life jacket just because of what happened to me. So, but it was great. I'm not fussing or whining. I'm just still a little scared, but I'll get there. It was beautiful. It felt good to be in the water. I'm glad you're with me. Um, baby steps. <laughs> And just like that, it was time for us to leave Bonaire. And even though you can just about see Curacao from Bonaire, it's still a sail where you can lift up the sails and have a great time. Plus, this will be our chance to get our guest, Marcel, in the action and give me a chance to take a little more control. And in terms of becoming more adept into her surroundings, Jessica is now becoming more of a captain. Listen, when we were out and about for the last year and a half, Avalon and Largo did as much captaining as possible because, well, that's what we do. It gives them like the ability to do more than what they thought possible. And Jessica took a back seat and now... That's right, we're losing Avalon. So I'm going, now that Avalon's leaving us, I'm stepping up to the plate and I don't know who's going to film now, but I'm going to take a more active role. And I'm pretty excited about it, but I may do some beginner things. So if you guys see that, you're like, oh my gosh, she's been on the boat forever. Um, well, you now know why. Power, power, start, start, right? Go ahead, power, power, okay. Good. I don't think that one came on. No, keep on. Okay. There you go, you feel it? I know how to do that part. <laughs> okay, go ahead and tell, give the kids the order. What's the order that they're on, they weren't on slipping? Yeah. Okay, and then I'm gonna put it in reverse, right? No, no, we're just gonna drift backwards. Okay. All right, unslip it, guys. 
We on hook. We're on hook. Okay. So we're in neutral and the wind is coming towards us. We're head to wind, so it's just gonna push us back until we decide to go and turn go that way. And we have glorious conditions today. We do. We have 18 knots right behind us and um, we may see a little bit of the spinnaker. I think out. we're gonna run the, I'm, since I'm the captain, am I the ca I'm not really the captain today, I'm just captain in training. I think we're gonna motor the whole way and stop for coffee, drive through and. We're running the spinnaker today. We definitely, there's no motoring today guys. Don't pull it out too far. Sadly enough, this is to be my last full sail on Friendship, at least as a full-time live-aboard cruiser. In the two years I have been on board, there is one thing I have come to know for certain. It's that no matter how much of a chaotic mess it is to be on a boat, with the altered schedules, weather constrictions, and small spaces, it's the moments where it all comes together, the spontaneous bursts of laughter and the knowledge that we all have each other's backs, that makes it worth it. There are so many reasons why to live a safe life. But for me, the adventurous life is irreplaceable. And the fact that I've achieved it with my family is the ultimate success. We've done so much together and I will be eternally grateful for that gift. Now it's time for mom to get on it and take over my role. So how'd that make you feel? I felt quite useless to be honest. I was, I had the camera up there and I was only gonna have it up there for a minute and then disaster struck and I was with the camera and the phone and I couldn't help out. But I did pay attention to what they're doing and Excuse me, I think I could get the spinnaker up with a team of 85 people helping me. There you go. <laughs> I think it, do, it doesn't seem as complicated, but there always seems to be something that goes wrong. So you definitely need at least two people up front and then one back here for sure. But I think I can do it. Well, we got Largo. And you're good he's in the helm. He, Largo is a pro. He is, he's, he solved a couple problems out there. Even though Avalon and Marcel were kind of leading what was going on with the spinnaker, Largo was instructing from the far and he had some really good things that we had missed up there. And then Will, you at the helm helps too because you're kind of giving instructions as well. So In the meantime, we're doing seven knots and 12 knots of wind. And I'm, I didn't take any seasickness meds, guys. And I'm not going to complain about it or anything, but I started to get a little yeet up front there because the front is really bumpy. But I feel pretty good now that I'm back here. And so how did Marcel do? His first sail, Will. He didn't get seasick. He didn't get seasick. No. And he was he was very active on helping out. And he, yes. He knows quite because he has he's taken some mountaineering, done some mountaineering he stuff. He did some like that. sea scout stuff too as well. And so he knows the sea of it, and he knows um, the uh, shackles and all that kind of stuff, which is cool. So he's yeah. not a total novice. He at saved all. us a little bit as well. He did. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna keep him. We're good. <laughs> we're not. We should probably edit this out because his parents don't know we're keeping him. No. <laughs> But, but he, he, does, he, does, he does eat a lot, so we have to like provision a whole lot more. <laughs> we are now heading back to Curacao where we will dock Friendship for a month and head back to the U.S. to visit family and launch Avalon on her university journey. Could this be your last time touching the main sail of one? No. Last time until you come over Christmas, right? Clear down further. It's going to be sad to be without her, but this is life and changes that come about from it. We will survive and are already thinking about our time on board beyond. Welcome to the cockpit of SV Friendship. I am taking the lounge position. I'm actually enjoying this. Jessica is over there. Look at her. She's a judge. She's got the grunt face on. We have all taken orders and we're doing okay. I like to say that with Avalon gone, Jessica is going to be one third of Avalon, which is. <laughs> I don't know about that. And Largo is two thirds of Avalon, so basically now we're 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 a two person crew. So we might be looking for replacements. we're looking for crew when we want to go to Colombia. So anyone who has experience, let us know. All right. Anyway, all that being said, we, being the fact that we have like a fifth crew member on board is actually kind of neat. Because of COVID, we bought the boat in the middle of COVID, so we have not had that many guests stay overnight. My sister a night, my mom a week. And this is the first young person that we've had on the boat that slept on the boat with us, and I really like it. I wanna have, I'm hoping that when Alan comes back from college, she'll bring friends, and friends that she has already will come back again, and maybe Marcel will come back again, and Largo will bring friends. 
and we'll have more of our friends come on board because I'm I'm super type A, so I love a full house or a full boat uh, of people on here. So I, I hope, I'm looking forward to getting more people on here with us. Margo, if you had if you had, if you had a choice for a crew member, what would it be? Somebody who knew fishing, who knew sailing, and also who could clean. So we can just be like passengers. No, I don't mind cleaning and cooking the fish. I just want someone to catch them. Because we clearly are very challenged in that area. Very much so. Look at this. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely delicious. But... How are you doing this morning, Laura? You had a little bit of seasickness last night. You better? I'm a bit tired, but I'm good, yeah. Because during the crossing of the Disney Pacific, I, my dreams are, are way too far ahead. We're replacing you. Nice. Marcel was auditioning for the part and he yeah. just got it. Yep. We didn't tell you. Do you have a moment there? Any 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 docking where nothing gets hurt or broken is a good docking. It is a good dock. Is anything hurt or broken? No. Nope. Dad, we're still in forward gear. 